Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Many of you know that I have two kiddos. They are very, very different eaters. And so today I wanna to share my top five regrets of starting salads that I think made a huge difference. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining. If you like my content, give me a thumbs up. It's always really helpful. You can subscribe if you'd like. So if you've been around for a while, you know that I have a three-year-old son named Jace. Wow, I can say three now because he just turned three. And he has always been a picky eater, okay? Or for those who don't like to use the term picky eater, a selective eater, because apparently I can't say picky anymore. <laughs> I've shared a lot of that journey on here, kind of with this eating, some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Then I've got Aria, my second kiddo, who is about to turn one, and it is like night and day between the two of them. She is a fantastic eater. Looking back, there are some very specific things that I did differently between the two of them because I learned a lot from my first experience with Jace. I was basically determined to not have another picky eater because it is very, very stressful actually to have a picky eater. Also, I'm just a mom, I'm not a doctor. Make sure you talk to your pediatrician about all of this stuff. A lot of the information I'm sharing is just things I've learned online from you know really popular baby led weaning Instagram accounts or solid food Instagram accounts. I will link some of them below. And if you have any that you've really enjoyed and found helpful, make sure you put them in the comments as well. And let me know in the comments what do you think? Do you think that you're just born a picky eater or a great eater? Or do you think that there are certain things we can teach and do along the way to help them? What I'm going to share today is five main regrets that I have that I feel like were things I really switched up from my first kid to my second. I wish I knew these things as a first time mom. So that's why I want to share them today. And when I talk about regret guys, this is like a healthy regret. It's not like, oh, I sulk and cry every day about this. It's more like, Oh, looking back, what do I regret and what did I learn from it? I actually asked you guys over on Instagram what your regrets are and as I was scrolling through, everyone was saying the exact same things as the five things on my list today. So I see that we've all struggled with these things. We've all made mistakes and figuring it out by our second, third, fourth kid. <laughs> okay, so my first regret, number one, is that I didn't have a plan. I really didn't. I was a first time mom. There's already so many things I was figuring out. By the time that Jace was like four or five months, I was like, oh yeah, I think we're supposed to be stop starting solids around this month. And I had no idea what baby led weaning was. I had never heard of it. I kept seeing that acronym everywhere, BLW, didn't know what the heck it meant. <laughs> so I did start off with purees with the Jace and then ended up switching to baby led weaning after like two months. I personally love baby led weaning. It just makes so much sense to me. I believe it really is helping our kids eat better. And it's so much easier for food prep because you're not having to puree everything, which takes more time. But do what's best for you. I don't think baby led weaning works for every family. Like I have a friend who makes everything into soup for her little one. She's got three kids and they're all really, really good eaters. And all they ate was soups like their whole first year of life. Regardless of what you decide, I suggest just figuring out what it is you wanna do and have a plan in place. You are just more confident in it and you can stick to that one thing instead of kind of like flip-flopping around like I did. After like two months, I said I switched to baby led weaning and yeah, I look back and I think, I wonder if I just started right away with baby led weaning, had a plan, knew exactly what baby led weaning was, Jace would have been a better eater. All that to say, I made sure with Aria, I did not make this mistake. I did my research, I had a plan, I downloaded an app called Solid Starts where I was able to actually track each new food she was trying every week. You could take notes in there. It teaches you at each age um, how to actually cut the food, how to prepare the food so that it's you know soft enough for them. It just felt a lot more planned and efficient and I saw how she responded really well to that. Number two regret is that I put way too much pressure on meal time. With starting salads, as I've learned, it's important to create a stress-free environment around food. With Jace, okay, so you gotta remember I was feeding him purees. So I was spoon feeding him, which means I was present there with him at all times and I was staring at him and I was trying to get it in his mouth and if he wasn't opening his mouth, I would kind of like try to force it in his mouth, which is like a no-no now, as I've learned. A lot of hovering, a lot of like, telling him to eat, okay? So a few things that I think were at play here. One, I was working hard to create a meal for him that I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this really good meal that I found this you know, recipe on Pinterest, he's gonna love it. And so when he didn't love it and he didn't eat it, he threw it on the floor and he spit it out. It was like, I took it so personally, you know? Cause I like worked hard and took my time to prepare it or sometimes bought really expensive organic ingredients to uh, prepare it. And then it would like break my heart that he wouldn't eat the food. 
Sometimes I would even cry after, like that's how much it bothered me. And then secondly, I think that a lot of us grew up in the era of like clean your plate, you know, you have to lick it clean before you can leave the table, you know, or we grew up in homes where we didn't have a lot of money for food, so you don't waste food and you don't throw food away. So I think we struggle a lot, at least I do, seeing my baby throw food on the floor that's not gonna go to waste. So all of that kind of combined, like when he, Jason didn't finish his food, I would just feel like this sense of shame that the food is being wasted. Now we have to throw this out, um, you know, if it wasn't like reusable, like how can he not finish? You know, like there are children starving in the world and you're not eating the food in front of you. And then I would want to like project that on him. Basically it just became a very stressful environment around food, like I initially said, kind of because of all of those things. So with Aria, I really had to work hard to completely change my demeanor around food and meal time. I literally would put, you know, the food right on the tray and sort of walk away. And by that, I don't mean like, don't watch your baby. You always have to watch your baby to make sure they don't choke, of course, but not hovering, not staring at them and not spoon feeding, which obviously that's why baby led weaning is super helpful because they are learning to use their hands and you don't have to sit there and just feed them the other time. So it's actually a lot easier on us as well, which is great. But this was also a lot easier to do once I had Aria because I had two kids by that point. And so I didn't have time to sit there and hover. You know, I was tending to Jace, I was cleaning stuff, taking care of things. I think you just become a little bit more relaxed with the second kiddo, whereas with the first, everything's so new. You like want to be there, you want to stare at them, chew. You want to watch their reaction when they try a new food. I really think that this has been huge and she eats so much better. I also just learned to take it a lot less personally. If she doesn't finish something, you know, there are obviously days where she's not eating certain things or just throws it on the floor and it just, let it go, you know, and learn to trust that she knows when her body is feeling full. I think that's another important concept to understand. Instead of force feeding, like trusting that, you know, their body is sending that signal to their brain, I'm full and I don't need to eat anymore. My number three regret with Jace is that I didn't want a mess. <sighs> so please let me know if you relate to this, but becoming a new parent is challenging in that what you once had control over in your home and your nice things it's truly gone <laughs> once you have kids there's a real sacrifice that starts to happen that was actually the reason why i really wanted to do purees once i did hear about baby led weaning i was like that sounds messy i don't want to do that I didn't like the thought of having to like clean him after then you clean the high chair then you have to clean the floor like it does add a lot of extra time to your day when you have to clean all those elements after mealtime, you guys know. But the thing is, all of that uptightness that I had was not helping Jace with mealtime. If you follow any of those Instagram accounts, you know that like one of the number one things they say is let your kid get messy during mealtime. I just didn't foster an environment for that and that is honestly probably my biggest regret from this list. With Aria, I had to completely change that, and I did. And I totally embraced the mess. I wanted her to get as messy as possible because I knew it was gonna help her eat better. I started baby led weaning, like I said, right away with her. So she was getting in with her hands, picking things up, feeling it, shoving it all over her face. So obviously I use a bib on her, like those silicone bibs. And then I also found an amazing product called the Ketchy which I've chatted about before on here. So here's the thing, there are floor mats that a lot of people are using under high chairs, like the silicone ones that are pretty easy to wipe up, whereas the catchy, it's raised up off the floor. And so picking something up off of that, it's just not, it just doesn't get as messy, okay? And then it's also just easier to wipe down. You don't have to take it and like put it in a sink to wipe it or wash it off. You can literally just wipe it right down with a rag and some spray. I just love the catchy so much. It has saved me so much time on cleaning and has create, created a much more stress-free, you can get messy environment during meal time because I know the food is getting caught in there. So it's just allowed me to be more laid back with meal time, which is what I really needed. So I have a discount code in my description. If you wanna use it, check them out. Every time after meal time, I'm pretty much giving her a bath practically in the sink, like she'll have food on her legs, her arms but I know I know it's helping her be a better eater, so I don't even care that she's getting messy anymore, which is great. Okay, so my fourth regret is that I got lazy 
with cooking variety. And I saw a lot of people in my DMs saying s similar things to this. I think that when you start to realize you kind of have a picky eater, you want them to eat so badly that you just keep giving them those same foods that you know they'll always say yes to because you just don't want to stress out. Obviously, you don't want them to be upset. And so you can very easily stop making a variety of foods. And one of the huge baby led weaning concepts is that you want to continue exposing them to a ton of different types of fruits and vegetables and meats. You want to switch it up even if they don't try that item. So for example, Jace's thing he really just never really liked was eggs. And we were so sad because we love eggs. Like every morning for breakfast, we love scrambled eggs. So I was like, I'm cooking breakfast for everybody, but like then I gotta make something different for him because he doesn't like the eggs. He maybe tried a few bites, but then he just didn't like it and he didn't want it. And I became so discouraged that I, for months and months, just stopped even trying. I was like, it's fine. I'll just give him pancakes. There's egg and pancake or, you know, other meals with eggs because I just wanted to make sure he didn't have an egg allergy. He just then stopped at some point being exposed to like an actual like exclusively egg product. So now he's three, he, he still doesn't eat egg. Maybe just once in a blue moon, he'll take a bite of egg and we're like so proud of him. So my regret with that is I wish I continued to just still expose him to it, even though I knew he was gonna just turn it away and not want it. I can't remember where I read this. I'm gonna try to look it up so I don't butcher it. But according to research, um, children need to be exposed to food at least 12 times, but up to 30 times before they truly decide whether or not they don't like that food. So yeah, all that to say that happened very often with Jace. Like I would try things maybe like three or four times. He kept rejecting it. And so I just stopped trying it. I stopped putting it in front of him. I get it. We've all been there where we like gave our kids PB and J every day for a week. <laughs> we have those weeks where we do it. And so I'm not shaming anybody for it. But yeah, I just noticed when I stopped switching up food for Jace, it kind of just like reinforced the picky eating even more. A good tip I remember reading is when you give them a meal in one of those food groups, include something that you know for sure your kid loves and will eat. That way they're actually getting something in their tummy they're encouraged to start eating, you know, one of the things right away. And you're less stressed because you see they're actually eating something. And then maybe the other two food groups are, is something new or something that you know they are less likely to actually try. That's something I really started to implement with Jace a ton. That way at least you'll feel good that they got something in their system and you won't feel totally discouraged that they didn't eat anything on the plate. So with Aria, I had to switch that up. I try to do variety. I try to continue exposing her to foods even though she pushes it away. Like the other day I tried peas. She did not want any, have anything to do with it. So I need to just keep getting that in front of her. She does like eggs, thank God. We just keep giving her eggs, all kinds of eggs, and she has joined us in our love for eggs. So let's move on to number five. And that regret is that I, how do I put this? Was giving Jace too much milk. He was getting full on milk, so full on milk that he was not eating well. Obviously, you need to talk to the pediatrician about this to see how much milk your baby for that specific age group needs to be getting. I'm specifically talking more so about when babies are like post nine months because that's when naturally their milk intake reduces. I just talked about this in a video recently when I weaned Arya. Around nine months, she started to nurse less and less. So naturally, her milk intake dipped. That was like a great time for me to really stick to routine with, you know, getting her in the high chair two to three times a day, exposing her to more and more food because naturally her milk intake is less and so she has more of an appetite for food. I don't remember taking advantage of that season with Jace. I feel like he was just so picky still at nine months that I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna fill him up on milk then. And so that like habit just continued into 10, 11, 12 months. Then he became one and he was officially off of formula and we started organic whole milk and he was still taking like a lot of milk every day. And I'm not saying that this is always a big deal. I think it depends on what you're trying to achieve. I was noticing, well, he's not doing a good job at meal time because I think he's getting so full on his milk. And I talked about it with my sister and brother-in-law and they were like, we think you should try lessening his milk intake and see if that helps him become a better eater. We were like, okay, we're gonna give it a try. So 
we just started to like slowly every day give him less and less and we did notice that made such a big difference with the amount of food he was eating. So I talked about in my weaning video how I've been like meticulous with weaning Aria off formula and she's starting to drink less and less because I was trying to avoid that whole thing that I went through with Jace. And so I'm noticing she is drinking less and less formula every day now and she's taking in more food. And so by the time she's one, I am not going to be having the same issue I had with Jace once I switch her over to cow's milk. Again, please make sure you discuss with your own pediatrician to make sure that they are still getting the right amount of breast milk formula or dairy milk every day. I'm like trying so hard to not say the wrong thing here because I know everyone's situation is so different. But yeah, that's that's my top five list. I mean, for me, it has been night and day the way the two of them eat. I do want to say that with Jace, like now he's three, I am noticing that his palate is maturing more. He's more willing to try new foods. He has improved over the past year with eating for sure. And again, I think a big part of that was lessening his milk intake and just trying to expose him to more foods here and there. There is hope, like it gets better, okay? Even if you made the mistakes and you have the same regrets that I do, that doesn't mean you're a bad parent. It doesn't mean your kid is doomed forever. It's probably not as major as we make it in our own heads, but yes, Will I admit that mealtime is so much more stress-free with Aria than with Jace? A thousand percent. Yeah, it's just these little things that like, if they can improve, it helps our days go a little bit smoother as parents. So hopefully something on this list helped you out, even if it was just one little thing. But thank you so much for getting through this video and taking the time to watch it. Again, if you learned something new, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.